Hi folks, welcome to another episode of NYC CNC. This is actually a pretty quick video on what was not a quick project. Uh, the folks at Tools Today, I've worked with them for a while and I've made some videos for them for their YouTube channel showing off their tools. And they came to me with this project a while back and it is a relatively complex 3D shape that they only had in an STL file and uh, I'm not a CAM expert on all these different file formats, but STLs are not like I just, you don't have the lines and edges and curves like you do. So you, in some respects, lose control over it. And they're notorious for being complex, like tens of thousands of uh, pieces of geometry to them. And it can be a little bit challenging for CAM software to handle the file size and the number of faces and uh, get what you want done. So when I figured this out, I absolutely wanted to share it with you guys. It's a really cool, part, it's this eagle coin. And what we do in Sprout Cam here is we use, uh, uh, well, the big takeaway for me was to get away from roughing waterline and use roughing and finishing planes with, I wouldn't call them tricks, but little tips on, on how to do that to get this done in a somewhat efficient manner. Because this is the type of part where there's not a lot of difference between you know, cam that is two hours of runtime versus like eight hours of runtime. And the results, hopefully, if you do it right, can be similar. So you want to try the two hour one if you can. So fun little video. I thought what we'd do is walk through this fruit cam real quick that I created. Hopefully this will be great for you guys if you're trying to do 3D shapes and you want to do them efficiently and, and take a look at this kind of stuff. We use uh, three different tools, a, a quarter inch roughing uh, end mill, standard end mill, a tapered uh, end mill that tapers to a 1 16th ball and then a one millimeter ball end mill. Again, all from tools today. And I do appreciate that they were great quality tooling and they were great to work with on this project. And then we'll show some uh, some both regular and slow motion footage of the coin being made on the Tormach. I think it's a great result and really is another example of showing off how uh, what cool is it you can make things like this on the machine. So let's dive right in. So here is the file as they sent it over to me. It's an STL and I'm just gonna walk through the operations that I did. So first off is a roughing plane with a one quarter inch end mill. This was in 360 brass. We cooked 5100, 45 inches a minute and parameters I stepped down basically to the lowest face on the face of the coin and in uh, 8,000 scallops. Again, I spent a lot of time experimenting with a balance. That op took four minutes, that's pretty quick. We'll, we'll rem render it at the end or simulate it. Then I did something that was interesting, uh, to me at least. I took two different passes with the same end mill. The first, and, and the idea was chip load. So what I did first was, this is a 1 16th ball, and I don't think, you know, Sprout Cam didn't save here. It's funny, it saved it here, but this is basically what the tool looks like. It's a tapered to a hemisphere. So you can see double radial, and that got me to the settings I needed. It was a five degree uh, taper. Um, so what I did here though, 5100, 15 inches a minute, same Z depth and strategy, I let it do both, and we see here the maximum step was six thou. That got rid of a lot of material, again, as you'll see in the simulation and the machine. Then what we did was we came through, same tool, faster, because now um, I, in theory, can do, I don't know what it's called, chip thinning, but I have, I'm not going to plunge the tool into a big chunk of material that's left, because we got rid of a lot of that in the prior op. So now what I do is a one thou scallop with that tool. And honestly, um, let's go ahead actually and simulate it. Um, up, till, up to that point, it's, it takes a while, it's a lot of work. That um, looks pretty darn good. Turn off the, uh, well, <clears throat> it's actually great. The, the colors show you what created what. So the green is from the quarter inch. The blue is mostly gone because a lot of it's been replaced by the, the light blue, which is the uh, finishing plane with that tool. Um, and actually, if we go, let's see if this will work to, uh, so here's what happens after just the quarter inch is done. You can kind of see the shape. Here's after the roughing with the 1 16th. Now you start to see the shape. And then here's after the finishing with the 1 16th. Boom. And then finally, the one millimeter ball I think this is a beautiful tool path. I mean, I really got to give it credit. This is, I just was mesmerized by this. And this is, you know, this is now a delicate tool. And, you know, you'll see in a few seconds here when we hop over to the machine, um, that this is, this is some pretty darn nice stuff. This was really testament, I think, to the quality of the Tormach and, 
you know, we're cutting these letters sort of on the fly. So it's going over and down and back out. And they turned out great. So the settings here were uh, 5,100, 20 inches a minute, which is pretty darn fast for a one millimeter tool. You'll, you'll break it if you don't uh, have your cam set up correctly and, and you, you know, all of a sudden find a bunch of material. 2,000 step over, this was the big driver of time. If you take that down to 1,000 or you change it to a scallop, that'll massively increase your op time. But I was happy with it at this point, and that was still alone an hour. So this whole part is two hours, so the first three were an hour, and then this last one was an hour cleaning it up. But guys, look at that. So if we simulate everything, now you'll see a bunch of red where it's gone through and you really cut those stars and those letters and so forth. So um, I know it sounds simple now that we've just walked through it, but it took me a while and I was trying to do roughing waterline and finishing waterline, and man, um, Spruit Cam just couldn't handle it. And I. I don't know if that was the uh, a glitch or weakness in the software or whether it's just that the waterline process is just too much. I mean, you gotta remember this is still just a home Dell PC. And again, there are, I, I'm making it up, but the meshes here, I mean, there are something like 50,000 little faces in this thing. So um, the point is we got it to do exactly what we wanted. I felt like I had good control over the cam and the tool path and uh, well, it worked. So let's take a look at some footage and hope you guys enjoy. Taking a look here, we can see just how cool this is with some slow motion footage. This is about 240 frames per second. Mm -hmm. 